love seeing those goals back, and I think Everton fans will as well. It was a, it was a really special moment in time, and it, it helped Everton preserve this extraordinary record, which they've still maintained, 67 years in the top division. Only Arsenal, as you'll know, I'm mm -hmm. sure, have, have been in the top division for a longer period of time. So it was a crucial moment in Everton's history. Let's move it forward to where we are now. We've watched Everton tonight. They're, they're pushing on f for Europe. Bigger picture, how do you see this football club taking the next steps? The next step is when you make the changes that they have done in midfield. I, I, I made the analogy, you take the Cortina engine out and you put a Rolls-Royce engine in. Allen, Decore and James Rodriguez. You put those three players in the midfield, now you, you, you've, you've got something. That's the engine room. But what that tends to do, that tends to highlight the places where you're weak. And when you miss those players play through injury or suspension. It's difficult for the boys who are out of the side to come in. I think Tom Davis has done pretty well most of the time that he's come in, but Everton just don't have the squad. And if, if they need to fatten that squad up, really, so you could play like for like, <clears throat> make different changes, because if you're looking to step up, you've got to be able to rotate your squad. There has been huge investment, but what do you think progress looks like for Everton? <laughs> I think, actually, if you go back to Seamus uh, Coleman's interview, I'm sure he mentioned something about the 80s and, and uh, Everton being mm. successful. And people of, of my generation or my age remember that. But I actually think the, the, the younger generation of football fans won't remember Everton like that. So people who've, who've sort of seen Everton in the Premier League era, what are Everton? What, what can they realistically achieve? Now, the, the target, sort of the start of every season with supporters, the, the dream is, can we make the top four? I don't think it's ever that, that realistic. I think it's always going to be tough for Everton in this day and age. But what Everton, for me, have got to become, and are, they've, they've got to be a team who qualify for Europe almost every season. They've got to be a Europa League team. And if they're having a really good season, they get in the, the top four, to be challenged for the top four. If they have a poor season, they drop out of Europe. And... I think things that are special and different about Everton is I think the actual the youth academy bringing players through. Liverpool as a city is a hotbed, mm -hmm. but it's it's easier to come through at Everton than Liverpool for, for obvious mm -hmm. reasons. I think what Everton are the best at is buying in the lower leagues. I think you go back to David Moyes' time, you think of Jagielka, you think of Baines, Cahill, John Stones coming through, Holgate tonight, Seamus Coleman uh, coming from Ireland. So Everton as good as anyone at that. So for Everton, yes, youth academy, young players coming through. So almost every young player in the country looks at Everton and thinks, got a chance there, you could come yeah. through. And when I talk about Europe, why can't Everton become a team who do really well in the Europa League? And a big disappointment has to be, and I'm going to look at the European record of Everton in, from the Premier League mm -hmm. era, really. So we're getting on for almost 30 years and... That, for me, is... What is that? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six... So seven years out of 28, 28, 29, that Everton have qualified for Europe. That's nowhere near enough. It should be double. It should be double at least. But also when Everton get there, you actually look at the record in Europe. It's really poor. That is nowhere near good enough. For me, what Everton have done in 2007, 2008, under uh, David Moyes then, is that... Everton should be looking to get to the knockout stages of the UEFA Cup. That, that for me is where Everton are. If I think of Everton, and I, I said before, if you forget, sort of going back to the 80s or the, the 60s, it's right now in the Premier League, it, you'd always say Everton are a, a top eight club in the Premier League. European football is normally top, top seven. And when they get in there, they have to do better. They have to do better. And you, and you look at that record, some of the you know, first round a year later, Group stage, the last time they were in Europe. And, and that's what they have to become. And listen, I'm not, because I, I play for Liverpool, it's not easy being in the same city as Liverpool who won European Cups and great heritage in Europe. But what, some of the things that Everton have got are really special. It's always going to be difficult to get into the top four or really challenge for the title. Can, can the stadium change that? Do you think so? I, I think that's the project. That has to be the project. It's a big ambition there, isn't it? Yeah, that has to be the project. They've got the manager. I think for years the manager, the managerial position has been challenged by, by fans because, as Jamie quite rightly said, 
you know, you look at the record and going out of Europe and going out too easy, not being there or thereabouts in the league, that can be levelled at Everton. There's no excuses about that. Now the manager's in place. It's a matter of the project that Carlo Ancelotti has to build. And it's going to take time, but they have great opportunity this season to, to, to jump. Kevin, we've got a graphic here of uh, basically the Everton manager with the highest points per game. In, in their Premier League history. There's a few other managers involved, but Carlo Ancelotti is, is right at the top of that. I mean, you look at David Moyes, I, I think he's done a super job at Everton. Also, the longevity, 427 games to still have 41% win percentage, I think is, is a great record. But does that show, as Seamus Coleman mentioned in his interview, that ha Everton have got the right managed chart. It's just basically maybe another couple of transfer windows to try and have a squad capable of challenging, really challenging, and getting into those Champions League positions? Yeah, I, I, I do think so. I think Carlo Ancelotti, when he came in, he, he looked at the squad. He didn't change too much. He just looked at it, understood what he needed, and he's doing it systematically. He didn't go out crazy in the summer. He bought in that midfield. Let me get that midfield right. When they had the three... New boys, what I call the Rolls-Royce engine in there. They looked a different team. You could see they started fantastically well. But over time, it's going to level out because they're weak in certain areas. I mean, Seamus Coleman, who's been fantastic for the football club, I think that he's pushing on. He's been getting injuries as well. So they need to freshen certain spots of that team up. You see tonight where you put defender in midfield. That, that can't happen because that's going to absolutely hurt you when you're trying to attack. So there's certain things that need to happen and Carlo Ancelotti is the man to do that.